people get confused when they talk about having the deposits and paying stamp duty and, and those sort of other costs. So what I like to do is break it down really simply, give people a simple, easy calculation to work out how much money they need to buy a particular house. So in this example, I'm going to use a $400,000 house as a starting price. So we need $400,000 to buy the house. We also have to cover the cost. Now those costs will be made up of stamp duty, transfer fees, application fees, conveyancing fees, and then also there could be some ancillary costs in relation to building and test inspections. But we lump all that under the costs. As a rule, if you are a house buyer or a home buyer in Victoria, that figure is normally around 5% of the purchase price. 400,000, 5% equals $20,000. If you happen to be a first home buyer and, and can get the advantage of having the reduced stamp duty cost, I actually reduce that to 3.5% as a guide. Some substantial stamp duty savings now for first home buyers. But if we use the 5% as a guide, then you'll have too much money more rather than not enough. We then take away so you can see we need 400 to buy the house and 20,000 in cost. The maximum loan amount for most lenders now is 95% of the purchase price. So 95% of 400,000 is 380,000. Very simply, we need the purchase price plus the cost, take away the maximum loan amount, leaves us with a figure of $40,000 as the funds to complete. So that $40,000 is made up of two amounts. The first amount, 5% genuine savings. Every lender wants to see 5% genuine savings as a minimum. Obviously, if you have more savings, that's even better, but the minimum you need is 5%. So that's $20,000. Now, genuine savings, that can be a lump sum or a gift that's been in a bank account for three or six months, depending on the lenders. Most will accept three months. It can be savings over a period of time, so whether you started at $19,000 and over three months saved $20,000, or whether you started at $10,000, there's consistent, consistently regular deposits into the bank account from your income place like that, then that's genuine savings as well. Or it could be from the proceeds of the sale of another property. So you previously owned a house, sold it, and you've got the cash in the bank still, and we can show where that cash came from. That's also considered genuine savings. The other 20,000, that can come from anywhere, whether it's a gift, whether it's genuine savings, or you've sold an asset like a car or a boat or a motorbike or something like that, and you've got a lump sum to deposit towards the purchase of the house. That doesn't have to be genuine, that can come from anywhere. Look, it could even be a personal loan, as long as the personal loan is taken into consideration in the servicing, which is what we spoke about before this. So, what people need to understand is that the funds to complete, that incorporates the deposit. So people get confused and they say, oh, I've got to come up with a $20,000 deposit or $40,000 deposit. Yes, you do, but that's all taken into the purchase price. So let's simplify it. The purchase price plus the cost minus the maximum loan amount equals the funds that are required to complete the purchase. And that's what that stands for. The funds to complete the purchase are $40,000. Of that, 5% has to be genuine, the other 5% can come from everywhere. If you are a first home buyer, that figure is going to reduce to around about $13,000, dollars $14,000. So I hope that makes sense, and if you've got any particular examples you'd like me to calculate, please ask. Thank you.